Hello everyone. Today we will learn a special type of inequality called as shoes inequality. This is really helpful for Olympiad enthusiasts. See IMO or IMMO or RMO. This inequality is really helpful for students preparing towards that exam. We will learn it through a problem. It's a special case of shoes inequality. Then we will generalize the shoes inequality at in the last. So stay tuned. Let's get started. So here is the question with the condition that A, B, C are non-negative real numbers. So by the letter or not plus, we mean non-negative real numbers. In other words, positive real numbers and zero. So if A, B, C belong to that, then I have to prove A cube plus B cube plus C cube plus three A, B, C is greater than or equal to. A square B plus A square C plus B square A plus B square C plus C square A plus C square B. First, let's rearrange it. Rearranging this would give us A cube minus A square B plus. I am splitting the three A B C term to A A B C plus A B C plus A B C and. I isolate A B C and the term A square C. Then a plus. We have B cube minus B square A plus the isolated term A B C minus B square C. As you could see, I'm isolating the alternate terms of R H S and the alternating terms of L H S. But it's not exactly alternating. First, I take one cubic term, and next as the term A B C. So the subsequent term would be C cube minus C square A plus A B C minus C square B, and thus we are exhausted with the terms. So this needs to be proved greater than or equal to zero. All right, let's factorize it to get something more interesting. If you factorize a square from the first term, you would get a square times a minus b, and if you factorize a c from the second term, you get a c times b minus a plus. If you factorize b square from the third term, you get b square into b minus a, and b c from the fourth term, we get b c times a minus b, and then c square times c minus a. Plus B C times A minus C. All right. So now, take away the common factors of the terms in the same row. So this boils down to the following: we get A minus B times A square minus A C because B minus A. Is negative of a minus b plus. You would get b minus a into b square minus b c plus c minus a into c square minus b c is greater than or equal to zero. Now again, further factorization would yield. A times a minus b times a minus c because one can take a common out of this, right? The two terms in it already contain a, and then we have a plus b times b minus c into b minus a plus c times c minus a into c minus b is greater than or equal to zero. Now. As you could see, this is some nice and pleasing expression, right? It's an eye-pleasing expression. So this is where we are uh, going towards the shoes inequality. What does it say? It says the following: Let A, B, C be non-negative real. The same domain from which we 
uh, utilized the variables a b c and r b any positive real number so it can be any positive real number then we have a power r times a minus b times a minus c plus b power r times b minus c into b minus a plus c power r times c minus a into c minus b is greater than or equal to 0. So, you could see that the above to prove inequality is essentially the special case of the shoes inequality in which r equals 1. So, we will take a bigger leap here by proving the shoes inequality and that would be leading us to the actual solution to the question. So, this inequality is known as Shure's inequality. But how would I go about proving it? The proof is not going to that convoluted as you could think. It's a little bizarre though. Maybe you can take A is greater than or equal to B is greater than or equal to C without loss of generality. But why? Because that will help us in the analysis of which term can be positive and can be negative. For example, all the terms A minus B, B minus C, C minus A can't be positive as they all add up to zero. So assuming one particular order of A, B and C, it will help us get through the solution or the proof. So without loss of generality, one can assume this because the entire expression in the le left hand side is symmetric about the variables A, B and C. So without loss of generality, so WLOG stands for without loss of generality, A is greater than or equal to B is greater than or equal to C. We assume this because even if the ordering is something different, one can assign the highest value to A and middle value to B and the lowest to C without having any change in the expression as it is symmetric. Okay. Now, one can take A minus B common from the first two terms and observe what is going to happen. We have A minus B times A power R times A minus C minus B power R times B minus C plus the third term which would be C power R into C minus A into C minus B greater than or equal to 0. Compare the two terms in the square bracket of the first term. First of all, A minus B is positive because A is greater than or equal to B. And if you compare A power R and B power R, clearly A power R is greater than or equal to B power R because A is greater than or equal to B. And also, R is a positive real number. So, you can definitely assert this with confidence. And as well, A minus C is greater than or equal to B minus C because A is greater than or equal to B. And if you subtract equal values from the two sides of inequality, the sign will not be reversed. So, hence, it will stay greater than or equal to. And we also know each of these entities are positive. Each of these entities are positive. Thus, we are good to multiply those two. So, if one multiplies them, we get A power R into A minus C greater than or equal to B power R into B minus C. And hence, we can conclude that this is positive. Now, 
proceed to the second term we get c minus a of course less than or equal to 0 and c minus b is also less than or equal to 0 but product of two negative terms will yield a positive term right now look into the terms you get positive into positive plus positive which is of course positive it's evident right so this inequality is thus proved quite easily but there is something missing in the inequality whenever we study inequality it is quite pivotal to understand the condition in which equality holds true otherwise i would just say you have learned only 50% of what you have to learn through the inequality equality condition is of course a part of the proof because if one can prove it's greater than 0 then the equal to 0 is just the border case of that so one should not transcend that so just take care when the terms will be zero so since all of them are positive we want them to be zero for the border case so let's take a closer look clearly we need at least one of these to be zero because if both are positive clearly it's non zero and anything non zero that is positive plus zero is still positive so we need at least one of them to be zero so either we get a equal to b from the first term or this term needs to be zero how will that term be zero we need a power r equal to b power r which is possible if and only if a equal to b so thus the condition for either of these terms to become zero is the same that is a equal to b so thus the first term entails the condition of a equal to b for it to be zero then now let's come to the second term we have c minus a and c minus b again one of them must be zero or even c can be zero so now we bifurcate this into two cases either c equal to zero which makes second term zero as well or c equal to b or c equal to a but if c equal to a or c equal to b would combine with the first condition of a equal to b to give a equals b equals c so thus we get two equations for two conditions which will entail the inequality to turn equality one is that all three terms are equal and the second one is that some two terms are equal and c equals zero that is the larger of them the two larger of them are equal and the least value will be zero so this is the condition or to be more precise these are the conditions so condition number 1 would be that all three variables are equal in value or some two values are equal and the third value the smallest value will be zero in either of these conditions we will get that the sure's inequality turns equality so this will eventually prove the problem because it is just a special case when r equals 1 also as a interesting part of it we can generalize the shoes inequality what is the generalization let's take a look so we have to set up the system to define it generalization of shoes inequality we have the numbers x y z a b c 
all real. So now we go and transcend our boundary to diversify our thoughts and we expand to the entire set of real numbers. We have k as a natural number and we do have a function this time. f of x is a function from real numbers. f is a function from real numbers to non-negative real numbers. So this includes again positive real numbers and zero. In such a case, we also have the ordering a greater than or equal to b greater than or equal to c and x greater than or equal to y greater than or equal to z or z greater than or equal to y greater than or equal to x. Now, we have two conditions for the function f. Either it can be convex or monotonous. Some deep insight into these will help you through the solution. Convex is when the double differentiation is positive or it's kind of curved upwards. Monotonous means either it is increasing, not necessarily strict, it's non-decreasing or non-increasing. So under these constraints, we do have a generalization of shoes inequality where we have f of x times a minus b par k into a minus c par k plus f of y times b minus c par k into b minus a par k plus f of z times c minus a par k into c minus b part k is greater than or equal to zero. So this will be helpful in few scenarios or in advanced mathematics, even beyond the Olympiad level sometimes. So you can also share your ideas regarding the proof. We will meet in the next uh, discussion video. Keep learning great mathematics. Thank you everyone. Bye.